Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Full Tank Motorcycle Podcast. It's me, Rob, from the YouTube channel Motorbob. And as always, I'm joined by my good friend, Tim. How are you doing? I'm good. I got my, did I tell you I got my bike the other week? Your new monster? Time. Yeah, I got my. I took it out just to sort of see. Uh, and other than completely deafening me and everyone within a mile vicinity of me, uh, it's a joy to ride. It's really nice. Can't wait to check it out. I mean, you, the weather's coming good as well, so you've picked it up at the right time. Best time to get back yeah. on two wheels, mate. And what a pair yeah. of two wheels, has to be said. Anyway, we've got a few uh, motorcycle news stories this week, as per usual. Some of the best. I've got some really good spy shots to look at, mate. And also, Ooh. comments of the week. Uh, I think this week I chose a few Tim-specific questions. You've been really getting people chattering in the comments. No surprise, yeah. though. You know. Well, there you go. I give the people what they want. <laughs> and then a bike of the week or two bikes of the week that I think are going to absolutely knock your socks off, Tim. But mm. first up, those spy shots. My contact who sent me these sold them to me and probably sold them to loads of other motorcycle YouTubers yeah. and websites. Uh, says that it's a street triple. So if you look at the engine, mm -hmm. the main part of the frame, the tank. Uh, yeah. It does indeed look exactly like the current generation of the Street Triple. But mm. boy, oh boy, does it look a mess. <laughs> like, this is very, <laughs> very rudimentary, you know, yeah, um, yeah. looks fairly early stages test mm. bike. Some of the stuff you can pick out, mate. I mean, they've got these billet yokes and handlebar clamps, which are absolutely not standard fit. You know, that's the sort of thing that they've... It's like rapid prototyping, I guess. You know, it's, it, it, mm. it wouldn't fit that on a production bike. It'd be too expensive. But what it does allow them to do, I guess, is make different parts and stick them on the bike and test it out. The dash looks quite low, I guess, for a naked. Uh, yeah, quite big too, actually. Yeah, it's a big old slab. And then a teeny, relative to that anyway, a teeny weeny <laughs> single round Triumph yeah. branded headlight that will be familiar. Well, it's either one eye of the face of the Rocket 3 right. or the little round headlight off the front of the Speed Triple RR, which is their semi fed modern cafe racer type bike. Very yeah, interesting. Yeah. I'll walk you through the picks and then we can try and make head or tail, which we might not be able to do, of what they're actually trying to build here. Like I say, you can see exactly the same 765 engine. Uh, but mm. out of the back, what? This is absolutely Ooh. not the sort of um, banana swing arm that they have on the Street Triple RS and R at the moment. This is no. either prototyped as well, yeah. so they can try a different geometry perhaps, or off a race bike or something. It's got that vibe, hasn't it? Yeah, it definitely does. I can't quite imagine or sort of uh, think of the bike. I'm thinking sort of CBR. Um, sort of swing arm, like you say, just sort of like a, an actual track-ready bike, if you like, fully fared sort of thing. But it does also look like it's got some uh, pretty basic welds on that thing. So, yeah, I'd imagine yeah. that, like you say, <laughs> is there to kind of work out geometry before you finesse and make the final piece. Moto 2 vibes, maybe. Also, purple Possibly. wheel on the back. I mean, that's not come yeah. off a street triple. I don't think they've ever had you purple that, wheels. That looks like one of my colleagues uh, who buys wrecked bikes and category um, cat ends and uh, does them back up. And he just ends up sticking any old wheel on. And it looks yeah. very much like that, yeah. It's Aprilia vibes I'm getting there, actually. A single coloured wheel. Purple's one of their mm. colours as well. But I doubt it. It's probably come off something in their workshop. Wavy disc. I mean, that's a bit of a throwback now to see those, and you don't really often see them mm. on a Triumph. Chop the exhaust off as well, I guess mm. because of this big, chunky, bad boy swing arm. And you can also see they've got the little plates uh, for things like the passenger foot pegs, which yeah, yeah. allow them to sort of move them around and try out different positions, I guess, and figure out what's most comfortable. Subframe, I'm not quite sure where this has come from because... Uh, I guess the normal street triple is all covered up with those, you know, cows and fairings and that sort of thing. Mm. But it doesn't look the same to me. It looks a little different. Looks like it angles up more. But like I say, that might be the yeah. lack of bodywork. There's a weird sort of, not weird even, but a very distinct kind of kick up, like you say, to the um, pillion seat, to the rear. Which is I'm just going to have to unusual. look at one, mate. I'm going to have to look at a street triple 765 subframe. There's always one on eBay or something. 
No, you see, they're, they're those cast aluminium things. It's like a, a shaped cast bolt-on thing. Who knows, mate? It definitely looks rather different. And then on the next couple of picks, uh, you can see the headstock from the side. What's interesting is you've got these little mm. fairing mounts on the side there. But the regular Street Triple does have some little cowls, so they could just be, that could be a standard frame and they're just from that. Or, yeah. you know, with this little round headlight, are they putting a half fairing or a full fairing for a Daytona? And then at the back end, those are the little round LED indicators that you get from the modern classic sort of Bonneville lineup. Mm. It's an absolute Frankenstein <laughs> of a test mule with all sorts yeah, of bits yeah, yeah. and pieces. Yeah. And I don't know about you, mate, but I'm, I'm struggling for theories on what it might be. I mean, they're saying it could yeah, be I, the next street triple for 2026 or whatever, because they only just updated mm. it last year. But I cannot see them dropping the twin headlights. Can you? Well, they did the version for the speed triple as well, right? So maybe they're going that route where you've got the option of the two and they've got kind of, I don't know, a special edition, if you like. It's, um, yeah, I'm not sure with that headlight. It's it's properly, they borrowed parts from all over because that, to me, it almost looks like the uh, bobber as well. Yeah. Or the Speedmaster kind of headlight. Um, so, yeah, an interesting kind of mix. And whether or not that's sort of... It's hard to determine whether any of these are like final form pieces or whether it is just to get the geometry before they start making stuff bespoke for this whatever model it is. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it, that you see all these different bits and bobs and I think that you're probably right, actually. You know, the fact that the indicators are totally mismatched means they're probably just mm. grabbing whatever they've got to get yeah. a headlight on <laughs> Literally it. Literally, just a fistful of parts from, from the parts bin and just sort of like chuck it at it and see what <laughs> sticks. Unless they, you know, they've not put the street triple headlights on it to try and make it more difficult to figure out what it is, but I'm not that falling for that. Be, yeah, clever sort of espionage covert thing. Yeah, maybe it just looks nothing like this and they're trying to throw people off the scent. That would be clever. Two reasons why I don't think it'd be a Daytona or like a street triple RR with a half fairing. That's what you'd think with this headlight, but I don't think that's going to be yeah. the case. Number one, uh, it's still got flat bars on it and the street, mm. the speed triple RR, sorry, the 1200 has um, slightly clip-on style bars and that'd be fun to, you know, what's the point in getting all the pegs and riding position dialed if you're then going to later swap the bars? I just don't think Makes that's going to happen. And secondly, I don't think the Speed Triple RS has sold that well. That's the naked one. I think it, um, well, I don't know. I don't think it flew off the shelves anyway because um, mm. it did get a bit of a hard time about the suspension when it was launched. Uh, but the Speed Triple RR, uh, which is the... Yeah, a third version that presumably it would be based upon if they did a street triple version. <laughs> Mate, I see those heavily discounted. So I find it quite difficult to believe uh, mm. that they would, based upon how that's sold, then go and build another smaller version. And mm. what I will say as well is that it kind of validates what they've been saying for ages, which is there's no point in building a really aggressive Daytona again because no more, no one will buy it. And look, they, they made yeah. a sportier, fared, clip-on version of the Speed Triple, and mm. it's not exactly, you know, selling in big numbers, like I say. This is how many left, which tells mm. you how many bikes are registered on the road of that particular model. 185 mm. in the first year, 2022, and then it went up to 270. So that's another 85 sold on top in 2023. We obviously don't have 24 data yet. And that is a, as opposed to, there's no data for the 1200 RS, sorry, the naked version. So I can't compare that. But still, let's say they're not humongous numbers when you consider something like a street triple RS, you know, there's like, mm. since 2017, when that came in, there's now 4,200 of those on the road in the UK. I just don't see them following up with another version of that, but smaller. And so I think, yeah. unfortunately, it's kind of boring news. I think they're just playing with the geometry and taking out <laughs> new bits for the oh, next Oh, no, gen don't be like that. Maybe they're bringing it out. Maybe this is final form. Maybe it's very <laughs> exciting news and trying for just going completely strip back. You know what, though, mate? Actually looking at it, without those little side panels on, with the round yeah. front, the little round front headlight, the big chunky mm. swing arm, all the bodywork off that subframe, it, it does look rough, but imagine if like a really good custom builder <laughs> took this concept and just neatened yeah. everything up. I think exactly. it would actually look pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, not joking. I think so. 
Including that swing arm. I want to stick that swing arm there, on there as well. Yeah. It's an absolute it's chode of a swing arm, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, we're massive. back to dick jokes, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, moving swiftly on, I guess. Also coming out of Triumph uh, just this week, it's the new Trident 660 Triple Tribute Edition, which they mm. say is paying homage uh, to their legendary five consecutive Isle of Man TT winning bike that was called Slippery Sam. Uh, and basically, they've given it a flashy paint job to sort of um, give a little sure. nod back to that bike. Have you seen this yeah. one, the pictures? I, I, yeah, I checked it out just before we came on. Um, I've never seen Slippery Sam, which is actually what I'm typing in now, because I, I, that could come up with a whole load of different things. Oh, no, good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a safe search on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luckily, Google anticipated, and it has given me only the bikes. Uh, okay, yeah, I can see that actually, when you know the context, that's the difficult thing with all of these um, tribute bikes and yeah. you know, when they're drawing from their heritage and stuff, you need to know what the heritage is otherwise you have to explain it to people so it needs to sort of stand on its own merits really but yeah having looked at it that's uh that's quite cool i like what they've done with the color scheme on that one it's very popping let's say that much it's yeah. rare for trying to put something out like this with a bit of um panache and pizzazz and so you've got to take your hats off to them for that and mm. also it's what people ask for so, you know, now's your chance if you did want um, a Trident in some other color than black. Although they did do the yeah. Baja orange, which, you know, pretty punchy as well. But mm. how much does it cost for a regular 660 in its most basic paint job? £7,895. How much does this one cost with the fancy paint job? And you also get oh, a few things chucked in. It might be a quick shifter, a belly pan and a fly screen or something like that. Mm. Certainly the bodywork. Yes, quick shifter, which is normally between two and two and three hundred quid, and also you got to pay to have it fitted at the dealer. Probably, mm. probably you could stick the belly pan and fly screen on yourself, but I'd probably want something who knows their stuff to somebody who knows their stuff rather to to do the work. I mean, combined that body work, the paint job, the quick shifter, you're looking at about a grand. So it's very rare because they're so so keen Triumph to charge you you know, 100 quid, look, for the more premium paint jobs. And it's yeah, only yeah. the basic black that comes at that 7895. So this, jet black with yellow. This, mm -hmm. jet black with matte silver ice. That's the one I owned. Best looking, obviously, yep. most tastefully done. Mm -hmm. And this, silver ice Diablo red, are all more expensive than the Slippery Sam edition. And what does that make you think, mate? That they want to sell them. I mean, like that yeah, is exactly. interesting. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, it's clever. I mean, <laughs> of those colorways, because obviously you were scanning through there, with the exception, obviously, of the one that you chose because it was the most tasteful. The you, um, that is probably actually I would go for the tribute edition. I think slippery that Sam is edition. the nicest. Yeah, slippery Sam. Let's just go with that. Let's go with the SS edition. Um, yeah. Is that <laughs> maybe not <laughs> bad choice of <laughs> phrase? Uh, slippery Sam edition. So I would go. Yeah, I think the Slippery Sam edition is the colorway I would choose. If it just I seems like a heck of, of a deal, though, which is quite surprising. Yeah, it really does. That is because, quite impressive. You know, when it first came out, they sold loads of them. I, I don't know how much detail I can say about it, but like speaking to the people at Triumph, they were like, "We're very happy with how this bike has gone." Mm. And I, I believe they had to up production because it sold much better than they expected. And uh, you know, when I owned mine, I had it for a I don't know, about six months, got all the videos I wanted out of it and then decided I needed something more distance bias because I was riding up to Triumph and back and yeah. BMW and all those places. So, you know, love that bike, but only got rid of it because I was like at risk of getting blown off on the motorway. <laughs> needed a windscreen, cruise control, stuff like that. Mm. And I don't think I lost very, very much money at all because you couldn't get hold of them. And they were mm. really in demand. So, you know, six months into it being launched, I, I really feel like it was only a case of like 100 quid or 200 quid or something that I lost on it, which is great. Cheap biking for something like that. For and that's bike, how yeah. in demand they were. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, now we're at a point where you can get all the goodies and they've made it a bargain. And that's very rare, which makes me yeah. think maybe it isn't selling quite as well now as it was back then. Yeah. And then I was thinking, well, what's the reason for that? The only thing I can think of 
is the old Hornet, which just came out like last year, the year before, and undercuts it Fair by point. about a grand and makes more power yeah. and gets a TFT dash. Yeah. And last year, that was in the top selling bikes each month, each month, like regularly, extremely regularly. So maybe they're having to do a bit of work to catch up on the sales. I don't know. But, you know, good news for the punter, because ultimately that's still a fantastic bike, regardless of what else is on the market. Yeah. And if you wanted a colorful one and you wanted some of those accessories chucked in, I'd snap the hand off for a 7895. Mm. Anyway, on to something that might, I'd say, at least get you slightly hot under the collar or maybe oh, yeah. get the old oh, yeah. pulses up a little bit I'm and that's a couple of, of trademarks yeah. that i've spotted from moto guzzi and we're gonna have a little look at these and see maybe which one is the one that does have you salivating profusely uh mm. first up they've they've trademarked uh, or renewed it for the moto guzzi california which was their big traditional looking cruiser that i think mm. was built upon the same 1400 ish engine as that mate i can never say the word the bike that's on the screen now the adache, adache. adache. that was brilliant adache. mate adache. i was like all this moto gutsy all this <laughs> but you're right <laughs> no one correct me i hope i'm right yeah carry on said with flair mate very impressive <laughs> uh, so that was the last iteration of the yeah. um california Quite Harley looking, but also it does its own little motor gutsy thing. Obviously, the, the mm. way the engine looks helps to give it some uniqueness. Yes. Um, but yeah, number one, maybe they're just trademarking that name to protect their intellectual property. We've always got to say that because that's probably the case a lot of the time. But number two, if they did bring it back, they don't really have an engine like this anymore, do they? No, which makes me think if they did bring it back, would they stick that engine in it or would they be sticking something else um, in there? Would they be sticking maybe the V100 just sort of bored out? Are they making that one bigger or? Yeah. I don't know, there's, mate. There's question yeah. marks in my head. But did really like that bike. I have, I I rode the um, Audace because someone... Um, fan of the channel actually sort of uh, offered a ride and you don't turn that down so yeah it was really fun to go and uh have a have a try on that one it is quite unique as well because i've i've ridden harleys um ridden indians and yeah. it doesn't really compare to either of them it is quite unique yes very cool looking bike but i find it difficult to believe that they would bring that engine back because of increasingly strict emissions mm. i read a good article actually the other day by martin fitzgibbons about euro 5b and what it actually means and um actually the sort of emissions levels are the same as euro 5 but what they're now testing mm. the longevity of the cat because it performs better when it's okay. brand new and it can mm. deter deteriorate so there's now there now has to be an o2 sensor before and after the cat to make sure that it's doing its job as efficiently as pos and if it isn't mm. you've got to take it for a service i guess because it'll you know flash up Good article. I think it's over on Visor Down with a bit more detail than that. Um, but yeah, like to take something relatively niche like that and have to go through that process for a big 1400 transverse V-twin for you know a bike that's not going to sell in massive volumes. Realistically, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Then you've got the V7, which is now an 850, which is a little bit too small, I would say, to knock something out like this. Uh, mm -hmm. Or the V100, like you say, which is thoroughly modern yeah. and feels a bit more sporty. But maybe they could do a bigger capacity version of that. Anyway, that's option one. Option two, my friend, it's the Moto Guzzi Stornello name that's been trademarked. And this was last seen on the V7 platform. And it was a sort of scrambler style bike. So we're talking slightly knobbly tires, <laughs> spoked wheels. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if that sits any taller with the suspension, does it? But it's got that high it rooted does, you know. exhaust, yeah. beautiful paint job, little fly screen, slightly higher bars. A road yeah. bike, let's be honest, but yeah. what a great looking bike that is. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't a massive fan of the high slung exhaust because it's got a little too many angles, I would say. It's weirdly sort of kinked. I do sort of get it. Too but kinky. Also, if you're... First time you've <laughs> ever said that. <laughs> exactly. It's too kinky for me. Uh, tone it down a little bit. So yeah, the um, exhaust, I was never a massive fan of. And also, like you say, it's very clearly a road bike. I had a friend who actually bought one of these, friend and colleague, and he took it to Salisbury Plains and just what? ground the thing out. Right? <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah, you or I would look at that and be like, oh, great, that's some optimism. And yeah, sure enough, he came back and was like, yeah, it ain't the right tool for the job. Um, 
I get it. I mean, it's sort of similar to the um, the Bonnevilles, the Scramblers that uh, Triumph do as well, right? It plays in the same sort of category where it's a bit too... Um, it hasn't got the ground clearance. It's a bit too heavy. It's not really the sort of bike you want to do some serious off-roading. Um, mm. So, yeah, it looks cool. It does look cool. But, um, yeah, more for road <laughs> Style is over there, function. Is there a word for someone who's a friend and a colleague? I'm thinking frolig. Let's coin it. I like it. So That's my frolic took it and ground it out regularly, yeah. We're frolics, I'd say, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, a little more on the friend side, I would say, than... <laughs> no, but right now... Like, a capital F. Yeah, we're right frolics. Right now, we Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Good to know where we stand. I think this would be amazing <laughs> if it came back. And this is much more conceivable that this would happen because if, effectively it's just a, an accessory yeah. kit on a you know existing platform. And they've got the, mm. what's the really nice V7 Stone Corsa, isn't it? The Cafe Racer style one. Looks beautiful. Yeah. You've got mm. the V7 Special. You've got the V7 Stone. You've got the V7. There's another one as well. Anyway, there's four of them. Or something like that. Mm, I'm going to have to look now, aren't I? Because I've got myself into a bit of a, uh, <laughs> back myself into a Moto Guzzi corner. Um, but it is, it's, it's the one between the stone, which is the most basic with the cast wheels, yeah. and the special, which has got the spirit mm. wheels and looks a bit fancy. And it's called the, oh, V7 Special Edition, which is why I couldn't remember it. But basically it's got red suspension and a fancy paint job, but it's very similar to the V7 Stone. Mm. For me... V7 Stone Corsa, easily the best looking with that Cafe Racer vibe. Love the paint job on that. But actually, a sort of sat up, more practical riding position is preferable. And if they did do something like the Stornello again, I'd be all over it. I think that would be like the best application, let's say, of what a V7 yeah. could be. Yeah. Uh, so that would be my pick. What about you, Cali or uh, Stornello? So, you know, I also, I think I saw something with the Stornello name because they've got those um, single cylinders potentially in the works as well, right? Oh, man, I hope they don't do that. Come on. Yeah, I'd prefer if they gave it to the more premium V7 than if they just sort of like, uh, it's diminished that, the name mate. a little I bit. I, I, I even thought about I that. read a little further in and I saw something about like, oh, maybe the single. And I was like, same as you, I had the same reaction, which was, no, don't do that. Because that would well, maybe it'd still be fun. I don't know. It played with sort of Svart Pillin, or at least what the Svart Pillin originally kind of was that kind of uh, bracket of bike or the mm. Triumph uh, 400s. But yeah, yeah, I think for me, out of these two, the one I'd be most excited for, and I think possibly because it's a bit of a long shot, is the California. Because I think the V7 is great anyway, but the California would be a different platform that's bringing out a cruiser where at the moment they've got a bit of a gap in that market or at least in their lineup. So I think if they could bring some version of the California forward, then I'd be very up for that one. I agree. It's a long shot, though. You're a dreamer, mate. I'm a realist. <laughs> I just want an accessory kit on a V7. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You're yeah. more ambitious, you know, romantic ideas about what might happen. <laughs> I'm practical and pessimistic. Anyway, <laughs> we're on to comments of the week. And like I say... Well, I didn't just filter on Tim to find these. I just noticed in the last episode, there's a few Tim-specific questions. So I'm going to get through them and mm. see what you think. Number one, Sting Kevlar says, Tim, I have a question for you. Are you doing ads for glasses at Boots? Just seen a Boots advert, and I'd swear it's you. I wish it was, because that's good money, that. Um, no, it's not me. Although, that I'll add it to the category of people. There's, there's a few that occasionally I get sent uh, links of people that look like me. So oh, that's kind of annoying. If you can find it, send me a screen grab, then I'd like to see just how like me he actually looks, because, you know, there's only one me. I spent quite some time trying to find that Boots Glasses advert with you in it. <laughs> uh, couldn't find it. Um, and so if anyone does know where it is, put a link in the comments of this video and we'll check it out. And any yes, other please. Tim lookalikes, for that matter, uh, if you yeah, want to put kind. me lookalikes, yeah, you can, but I do feel like generally they're not going to be as flattering. <laughs> Jfro5867 says, why have you stopped doing your rarefied road channel, Tim? Time. It's just Busy, time. isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah I, I won't get sort of too uh, down a rabbit hole on this one. But uh, yeah, I just because I'm doing obviously stuff for your channel on the regular. I'm doing stuff for Urban Rider as my day job. I'm making videos. So one, it kind of scratches that itch. 
Two, I haven't got the time because then it's just my Saturdays and Sundays, which are usually spent doing something to the house at the moment. Um, and I can't necessarily think of anything different from the stuff that I'm already doing. So yeah. if I'm going to put it out to other people, if anyone else cares, um, if there are any suggestions for some quicker edited formats that people want to see on my channel that is different from the stuff that I do for you, where it's just, you know, if I want to do a review, I'm going to do it on your channel. If I'm going to do gear stuff, I'm going to do it on Urban Rider. So if you've got suggestions for other things, please send yeah, them Yeah, what do way. people want to see I want to keep it. And it does break yeah. my heart a little bit, but then I haven't posted it in a while. Do you know what I was thinking, though? Actually, if you're a massive Tim fan, just want to see Tim on loop on YouTube, there's actually more uh, Tim content than there's ever been, I would say, at the moment. You've got the oh, Full yeah. Tank Motorcycle Podcast where you can mm. get a good dose. Uh, there's the Clips <laughs> channel where you can see the same podcast edit, edited yeah. into shorter clips. You're on my channel, I'd say at least mm. once or twice a month, maybe more, if it's a good month for you and yeah. me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then Urban Rider, and it's almost like you need an yeah. aggregator. Could, could Rarify Road just be clips of you appearing elsewhere on the internet? And we could call it uh, House of Tim or something. No, sh <laughs> Chateau de la Tim. To make it sound yeah, a bit nice. more. Yeah, nice. It's good. Um, but yeah, you know, you just got to know where to look if you need to get your dose of Tim. <laughs> Stewie62 <laughs> says, like Tim, I always used to say I was five foot ten and a half. Ha ha. Not really a question, but I just wanted to flag up that there are other just people there that round up their height to half inches. Yeah, towering. It's, yeah, I'm not rounding up. If I was rounding up, I'd say 11, five foot 11. Oh yeah, but, sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just being of it like really that. accurate. The world's all about context, isn't it? And I had, mm. I had looked at that thinking that you were scrambling for every millimetre mm -hmm. of height. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, <laughs> you could look at that as you being quite um, modest. Yeah, you've rounded it down exactly. by half an inch. Yeah. So, I could have fair play. Instead. Low mate, 1963. You guys are the smashy and nicey of the motorcycle world. <laughs> Fab Mungus dudes. Have you ever seen Smashy and Nicey? Yeah, and my <laughs> my reaction to that was, uh, one, you're both showing your age, and, and also because I get the reference, you're kind of showing my age as well, because it's, it's quite a, a dated reference, a good reference, but it's uh, I'll take it as a compliment. I don't know how you felt. Uh, I remembered that it was some kind of like DJ duo, and I had a feeling it was mm -hmm. like Paul Whitehouse. Uh, I don't know, was it on Harry Enfield as a sketch? Harry Enfield, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I watched it back, and I actually sort of imagining it, like someone seeing that as a parallel to us. Found it very funny, really enjoyed watching <laughs> yeah. it. And I like uh, it. I'll take it, and we'll bring as much smashy and nicey energy to future <laughs> episodes as possible. Um, thank you very much to all of the commenters. Keep leaving all this good stuff and we'll pick out some more next time. And that just leaves us with Bike of the Week to round things off rather nicely. Gosh, great headline on Ride Apart for this one. Stop what you're doing and look at the Honda Monkey Star Wars edition. There's some kind of show on at the moment, mate. Uh, is it Tokyo? Uh, oh, motorcycle show. Yeah, is it? Let me have a look. It's called Club... Sorry, Cubhouse Honda. I think they do uh, interesting little takes on some of the smaller capacity Hondas. And it's the Bangkok International Motor Show. And what they've built here is a pair of uh, monkey bikes. Yeah. One, well, you have to choose your side. One is based upon the dark side. Black finish, red grips, Darth mm -hmm. Vader vibes. And mm -hmm. um, then the other, of course, is the light side. Little Star Wars logo on the tank. Luke Skywalker R2-D2 in the background to give it that flavor. Mm -hmm. And uh, some amazing little details, actually, if you look through it. <laughs> like, it's got this sort of part carbon, part anodized filler cap, which looks pre pretty um, amazing. But also, they've got, like, special graphics. So on the swing arm of the dark side, it has an I am your father <laughs> uh, sticker on it. And there's a, I can't read the one for the light side. Just amazing. And so, firstly, what yeah. do you think of them? And secondly, are you a... Um... Dark side or light side? <laughs> yeah, kind of rider. <laughs> Depends on the day. Um, you need both. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, please. I would say, I love it. I feel like they could have gone further. I feel like they could have given it under neons, you know, a bit of a glow to it. Oh, um, like lightsaber, lightsaber vibe. Mate, they should have gone for a lightsaber vibe underneath there somewhere. You can, you can attach lights to that easy peasy. What about um, a lightsaber holster? Down the side of the yeah, fork leg. Or that, one of the two. I did see something there. It looked like it came with a lightsaber. It'd be great if it comes with a little like um, matching lightsaber. But yeah, if you could stick a little like holster somewhere in there that you could just sort of slot your lightsaber in. Mm. Um, I guess on the left side. So you've got your throttle hand, you need your left hand for the lightsaber. Yeah, I like it. Uh, and if I was picking, uh, I think I'm probably light side. I like to think I've got a dark side, but I'm a bit too nice. Smashy and nicey. I'm nicey. Oh, I'll have to be smashy then. I'd love to ride around <laughs> on those, mate. We'd look very cool, especially if we got the yeah. box set, which you just mentioned, which gets mm. you uh, a Star Wars LED light box that's got the Star Wars logo and then monkey logo. Choose your side beneath it. You do get um, a lightsaber lamp as well. Uh, I don't oh, know okay. if you can take it off its stand and whack people with it, but hopefully. <laughs> Otherwise, what's the point? And then um, you get a Star Wars pilot jacket that's sort of meant to look like a... Yeah, like I guess I don't know who wears that in One the, the film. X-wing yeah, maybe. So you can wear that when you're riding it, and you also get a dark side or light side key ring to go with your bike. What a fun! T- I have no idea on price. It's probably something ridiculous. It does have like a <laughs> carbon fiber, or the option at least of a carbon uh, box cover, air filter cover, cover or something. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Air cleaner cover. Um, mm. Presumably, that sort of stuff is going to really push up the price. Uh, but still, we always, like I say, Bike of the Week, we celebrate the weird, wonderful, illogical, irrational, possibly slightly daft. And I think these <laughs> tick every single box. So well yeah. done to Cub House Honda. That just about wraps things up for today. Many thanks, Tim. Have you got a shout out message for the audience or shall we just yep. slide send out? Send your submissions in for Rob Lookalikes, please. I'd like to see uh, some. Um, send them my way. Bikes of the Week as well. Wouldn't mind that. Yeah. Yeah, please. Especially if they fit those criteria. But many thanks for listening, everybody. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.